Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 11 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case highlighting some of the challenges in the detection as well as the treatment of the culprit lesion in patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. The patient was an elderly man who presented with severe retrosternal chest pain. EKG demonstrated inferior ST segment elevation with Q waves in lead 3 and AVF, with some ST elevation in lead V5 as well as V6. He was taken emergently to the cardiac cath lab, where coronary angiography done using radial axis demonstrated uh, no significant lesions in the left coronary system. Of note, radial access is the preferred strategy for ST elevation myocardial infarction, especially when aggressive anticoagulation is given. And second, in patients with a culprit that is presumed to be in the right coronary artery, there has been some controversy about whether to image the left coronary first or go straight to the culprit in order to decrease the door to balloon time. However, we do believe that it's best to image first the left coronary artery because if there is significant left main disease or disease in the LAD and the circumflex, this could be important information to tailor treatment and know how to manage the patient if there is hemodynamic collapse or other complications during attempts to recanalize the right coronary artery. After imaging the left coronary artery, we performed angiography of the right coronary artery. However, to our surprise, that was a small non-dominant vessel without any significant lesions, therefore leaving the question of the culprit vessel still open. We return back to the left coronary artery and perform repeat injections, this time in additional projections. And in the spider view, we do see a significant ulcerated hazy lesion in the proximal circumflex, which was also seen in an apicranial view there was the culprit, the culprit, therefore, and that makes sense now because the patient does have a left dominant system, something that sometimes it's easy to dismiss during the urgency to recanalize in primary PCI. We then proceeded with thrombectomy of the circumflex lesion, followed by predilation as well as standing. However, after standing, the patient developed significant chest discomfort as the segment re elevation. And what was found was slow flow, presumably due to distal embolization from the thrombotic lesion in the circumflex, even though we had predilated and we had also used um, thrombectomy. How to approach this? The best therapy is with vasodilators. Fortunately, the patient here remained stable hemodynamically and therefore were able to give um, nicardipine. We prefer nicardipine because of longer half-life as compared to nipride as well as less hypotensive effect. And after giving intracoronary nipride, we did have a restoration of TM3 flow into the circumflex, and the patient had an uneventful recovery. Our case provides important lessons. The first is that in patients with inferior ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, it is important before treating the presumed culprit right coronary artery to obtain an angiogram of the left coronary system. This is for several reasons. The first one is to know if there's significant disease in the LAD circumflex or left main that could become important if the patient becomes unstable during treatment of the culprit lesion. And second, because as we saw in this particular case, the culprit may actually be in a dominant circumflex or a large circumflex vessel. The second lesson is that when performing diagnostic angiography in the setting of STEM in the non-culprit vessel, it is still important to obtain the full and geographic projections to avoid missing important lesions as this lesion in a patient who had a circumflex culprit for the inferior STEMI. The third lesson is that when treating a STEMI lesion or any thrombotic lesion, noriflow can occur and the therapy is mainly vasodilators with nicardipine and or adenosine to restore undergrade flow. Thank you.